Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to try to clear up one of the most common misconceptions when it comes down to memory location.net and that is reference types are always allocated on the heap and value types are always allocated on the stack. This is false, don't say that, never say that, it's not true, I've heard it wrong so many times on interviews, stack overflow posts, blogs, I hear it wrong all the time, it's not true. Only half of it is, reference types always get allocated on the heap, that's true. Value types get allocated both on the heap and the stack depending on where they were created. And that's what we're going to observe here. I'm going to show you exactly what is a stack frame, how value types are allocated, how you can inspect them in memory, how you can inspect the heap and what's allocated there, and how to detect when things are allocated where you don't expect them to be allocated. We're going to see a lot of things in this video, and hopefully at the end of it you should not have any doubt on where your type will be allocated when you're writing your code. If you like this type of content and you want to see more, make sure you're subscribing to the separate notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So we have two main different type of types in C Sharp, and that is the value type and the reference type. Value types can be all this, and reference types are basically all the others that don't fall into any of those. Um, I'm going to focus on primitives in this video and structs, but things like enums or things that implement struct also fall under the same value type category. Now let's quickly show you something. I'm going to create a number and I'm going to just give it a random value and I'm going to put a breakpoint here and debug it. And the reason why I'm doing that is to show you the memory because Writer has a tool here that allows me to load all the heap memory and then scan through that see what's allocated where. An integer, which is a value type, inside a method, which is basically a stack frame, will cause zero allocation. There's no difference in the allocation, nothing was allocated on the heap. This value is still being allocated somewhere, but that is the stack. And that's fine, because the moment you're outside of that stack frame, the memory in that stack frame just instantly disappears. And you don't have to worry about any garbage collection coming in, slowing your application down, needing to scan for dangling properties, and then cleaning them up. And you can actually see exactly where this thing is being allocated by using a pointer. So I can simply use an unsafe block here and get a pointer to that uh, thing. So I can say pointer equals address of number. And if I execute that again and I step over that, I can get a pointer and that's the address. And I can copy the value, go to uh, hxd, which is a tool that allows you to inspect the memory for a running program. I go inside the running thing and I select the block. This is an integer. An integer is four bytes. So if I say, give me uh, from that offset four bytes, I can see here that my int32 value is 420. Now, the moment I'm outside of that stack frame, this memory, and, and inside another one, this memory will automatically disappear. And I'm going to show you that in the video as we go on. But this is how you can see quickly how things are getting allocated. And if you need to inspect something, you can use HXD. Uh, it's a very good program. I use it for other things as well. Now, this is a value type, but what if we had a public class application here? And then let's debunk the value types are always allocated on the stack thing by saying private int uh, number equals uh, just a, another random number. And now say var application equals new application here. Something like that. And I'm going to debug this. An application being a reference type will be allocated on the heap. Cool. Let's load memory before. Step over that. Load memory after. Application has indeed been allocated on the heap. I can see exactly the difference here of one object. But then if I click in it, I can see that the integer is allocated with its parent on the heap. This is not a stack allocation. This is a heap allocation. And this is because the variable here was created as a top level class variable, which will always be allocated with its parent, which in this situation is the heap. So value types can get allocated on the heap depending on where they have been created. If this was something like this, where you have a public void, um, some method, and you have int number here, and you were using application dot some method uh, 420, then this, and let me just quickly uh, put a breakpoint here to show you exactly 
What's that about? I'm gonna load the memory here. The object must have been created. Yep, you can see that there is nothing in it. And if I step inside that method and I have the integer number created and I load, nothing has changed on the application itself. And if I go back and I search for int32, I do not see an int32 having been allocated. That's because a value type in that context as an argument of a method will be allocated on the stack, not the heap. So this is another thing that sometimes people get wrong. This will be allocated on the stack for value types. For reference types, it's always the heap. We have that cleared out. Now let's spice this up a little bit now that we have these two main things cleared out. Let's say I have the following method. I have a method that can print a date from local variables like this. I'm gonna go back up and say application dot print from local variables and I'm gonna put a breakpoint here and I'm gonna debug this code and I'm going to create these three integers. Again, these are all stack allocations. If I search for int32, I find nothing. This is an array, don't get uh, mistaken. This is not the individual value. So these are all stack allocations. However, the moment I step over this console.writeLine method to basically print those stack allocated values, I can load classes and I can see alongside many other things, six allocations here, 18, 12, 2021, 18, 12, 2021. Why did that happen? Well, this happened because of boxing. You see, string interpolation will really just do string dot format behind the scenes and a writer allows us to undo that. And here you can see really what you're gonna be calling. And what you're gonna be calling is the string dot format, which doesn't have an integer overload. It's just gonna use object. And if you remember from the boxing video I did a while ago, if you have an integer and you implicitly convert it to an object, it will get boxed, which means it will get basically put in a box and allocated on the heap and get a reference to that. So now these originally stack allocated objects will get allocated on the heap due to boxing. So this is another thing you need to worry about. Yes, these were stack allocations, but now they got boxed. So even though it doesn't look like it's harmful, it can be. Another type of uh, a value type is a struct. For example, we have this day struct where you have a day, a month, and a year. What's the deal with that? Well, it follows the same rule. If it gets created here as a private date struct of a date struct, let's say, and we give it a value, then this will be created on the heap alongside the reference type which refers to it. However, if it's being referred into a struct which is not being referred into a reference type then that will be allocated on the stack with its parent now let's create a method for that as well this is susceptible to the exact same shortcomings as the local variables since they're both value types and let me quickly demonstrate that by doing application load from uh, struct here we go i'm gonna stick a breakpoint here and I'm going to show you that the structs, again, are not getting allocated on the heap, at least in that context. So nothing here. And if I step over that, again, no difference date struct, nothing. However, they're still susceptible to this boxing problem. So if I step over that and load classes, you can see all the things allocated and these values have been allocated again. So unfortunately, depending on how you use the stack referenced and stack created, uh, variables they can be allocated on the heap now remember when i said that this thing can be created as a class level variable like this well c sharp seven point something i want to say added the ref struct option which will guarantee that the struct will always be allocated on the stack no matter what which then means that you're limited in how you can use it because now that I added this as a ref struct, which is basically what span is, so span falls under the same category, span is a ref, a read-only ref struct, I think, um, then this no longer compiles because it says, hey, field cannot be byte ref like type whatever unless it's instance of a ref struct, which is basically code for, hey, I cannot really allocate this here, put it somewhere where I can allocate it, which is here. So this now guarantees that this struct will always be allocated on the stack, never on the heap. And that's good. 
Now, let me show you how stack and stack frames deal with memory because I think that's pretty interesting. I'm gonna say local struct first, local variable second. Sweet. And I'm gonna increment the year by one and also get a pointer to that memory. So I'm gonna say pointer equals address to the year variable. And then I'm gonna increment the value. And I'm gonna stick a breakpoint to this. So what's gonna happen is first, we are going to, once we debug this, oh, and that is the wrong order actually. I wanna do the local variables first and the struct second. So I'm gonna debug this, go first into the local variables. And as you can see, I created my stack um, things here and I get a pointer to that thing allocated in memory. I'm gonna copy the value. Again, integer four bytes, go back to HXD, load this, select block, starting from uh, this address, and then get four bytes. And you can see the value is 2021. And it's this memory um, over here. So if I step over this year and I increment the value by one, you can see when I select it to update it, that now it is 2022, updated it. Now, the interesting thing about the stack frame is once you're outside of it and inside a different stack frame, for example, the next one, the struct one, you're subject to a completely different memory allocation, which means that if I go here and I reselect this, I see 12 here. That's because this bit of memory that before was hosting the year now hosts what seems to be the month. And I can prove that because if I get the next four bytes, I get 2021. So the stack frame was instantly once we're outside popped and a new one was created and that memory chunk was reused for my next method and it almost nearly allocated in the same addresses um, a bunch of bytes, which in this case is the date strike properties. So it's interesting that we can actually see how quick that happened and there is no garbage collection, no nothing that happened during this time to clean anything. It's just value types allocated on the stack. The stack is being popped once you're outside the frame and the memory is reused the moment you go and do something else. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how this would work with a reference type. So I'm going to create a class, a date class, similar to how I have a date struct, but instead I'm going to create a method that is doing that. It's printing the date from that date class. I'm going to put a breakpoint here, go back up here, say application dot print from class and debug this and show you this allocation and show you how this will be allocated indeed on the heap. There is nothing here, nothing in date class, but the more I step over this and I load classes again, one date class object allocated here. And as you can see, you cannot see these properties um, because the properties and properties don't really exist as properties. They're really fields in here. So that's why you can't see them. Um, but trust me, they are there. And you can see that they're not independent integer allocations because they're just not. Again, the moment I step over the right line method, you can see that now they have been allocated because of boxing. And that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So to recap, a value type that is defined as a variable inside a method is stored on the stack. A value type that is declared as a parameter on a method is also stored on the stack. A value type that is declared as a member inside a class is stored with its parent on the heap. A value type that is declared as a member of a struct is stored wherever the struct itself has been created and stored. However, if this is a ref struct, it's always on the stack because it can physically not be created on the heap in one compile. Those are all the rules you need to worry about. This should solve 99% of every conversation around this topic and it should hopefully give you an understanding on what is allocated where. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, ring the bell as well, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.